what programming language should I learn? It's a question that's asked uh, by people who want to learn how to program but don't have any experience. Where should I start? There's all these programming languages. Which one should I learn? Which one should I learn first? Should I learn more than one? The answer is, it doesn't really matter. It does, but it doesn't. They'll, they're people who are very uh, argumentative. They, they think one programming language is better than another, and some are, are more suited than others for certain tasks. But for the most part, if you learn one programming language, you can at least understand and quickly pick up most other programming languages, unless you go really low level like assembly, which is very different. But anywhere from C up to Java, Python, Bash, you learn these and they're kind of interchangeable in many ways. I don't want to say interchangeable. That's probably not the best. Uh, usually I equate it to this. My father doesn't speak Italian. But he claims he can understand Italian pretty good because he grew up around it. And since he also understands Italian pretty well, he also can understand Spanish pretty well uh, just by hearing it, even though he may not speak it well. You learn one programming language, you may not be able to sit down and write something in another language, but you could look at the code and understand what's going on, you know? So what I'm going to do today is I looked up an example code. I wanted to start with C, right? C is a lower level language, not quite as low as assembly, but it's definitely lower than bash or JavaScript. Well, I looked up some example codes and I just picked one at random, uh, modified it a little bit, and it basically you give it a list of years, you loop through those years, and it returns whether that year is a leap year or not. So it does a little bit of math, have different functions, arrays, and loops. So I took that code, modified it a little bit, compiled it, then I took that same code, and with a few modifications, I converted it to JavaScript, because JavaScript and C actually are very, very similar. Uh, lots of times when I've written stuff in C, and then I've gone to write the same thing in, in, in Java, or, or JavaScript. Did I say Java before? JavaScript, two different things. If you write something in JavaScript, and you go to C, or the other way around, lots of times it's very, very similar, or almost identical code. Then I also wrote it a third time in Bash. Uh, which I'm actually a lot more fluent with. And with Bash, the way I wrote it, I could actually shorthand it a lot and make it a lot shorter. But I want to show you that how similar they are. So let's go ahead and look at them on my computer. I'm going to run each one, and then we'll compare this code side by side. I have I don't think I said in the video, in but as always in the description the of this code, video, which I've compiled will be linked to all a the C binary here. Video, so I have a stuff. JavaScript uh, have a great day. the same code and Bash the same code. So let's run each one. Let's run the C code first. There you go, it looped from the year 2000 to 2004, telling you which years are leap year. Then I'm going to say, uh, let's do the JavaScript one. The output is exactly the same. And then we'll run the bash one. And again, we have the same output. So now let's go ahead and compare the code together. We'll start with, oh, not the, the C, but C, the C code. And then over here, we will look at, uh, we'll start with the JavaScript. Okay, so. We have some comments at the top here, uh, and they're commented the same. And uh, with JavaScript, I had to say this is a script, use the Java interpreter, the Node.js interpreter. With C, we had to include some libraries. OK, beyond that, the code is going to be almost identical. So let's go ahead and move up here, and we'll line this up. So we have some functions here. So here I declared a function. I called it year check, and we passed it a variable called year. Here we're doing the same thing, but we're saying that it's a, a Boolean, meaning it's going to return true or false. Uh, so we're checking year. And again, we're passing it a variable here. We're declaring it's, it's a, a int, so a whole number, basically. Uh, with JavaScript, you don't have to declare that. It's going to recognize it. So that's a little bit of difference, but clearly the same. The rest of this function, so this, this function is exactly what I copied from the example site, and I did not have to change it at all from C to JavaScript. It is exactly the same, comments and everything. OK, so let's look at the main function down here. So we have a main function. Again, here we're going to say int, so it's going to return something. Over here with JavaScript, we're just going to say function. It's a function, OK? And we're calling it main. And here, we're going to create a variable. I'm sorry, an array, which is a type of variable. Uh, and we're going to give it an array of numbers, which is very, very similar. Here, we're saying int because they're numbers. Uh, here, we're saying let. Uh, other than that, we have curly braces here. And over here, we have brackets. But other than that, it's the same. And Again, if you know this, you're going to look at this and go, OK, clearly this is an array, right? Uh, next over here, I'm getting the length of the array, 
which is this line here. With the JavaScript, uh, you can shorten that just to give it the array and ask for the length. That's kind of a built-in function there. Uh, so it's shorter, so I was able to put it right in the for loop here. So it saved us the line. I could have put this down in here, but it's so long I broke it up into two lines. So now we have a for loop. We're saying, okay, we're creating a variable called i, saying it to zero. We're gonna say, while it's shorter than the length of the array, loop and add one to it each time. We're saying the same thing here, create a variable i equals zero, as long as it's shorter than the length of our array, add one, right? So we got, oh, I don't have them lined up exactly the same, but almost identical lines there. And then the rest, uh, we're passing it to the function. We're saying, here's the year. Same thing here. And then if it returns true, here we're printing F, which will print it to the screen. And here we're saying console log. Again, they're written slightly different, but if you know one, you can look at that and you go, okay, you might not know, oh, I have to do percent %u and then put the variable over here, where here you just kind of put it in the line with curly braces and a dollar sign. So you may not know how to write it in C, but looking at it after knowing this, you, you understand what this is doing. And then if it returns false, we're going to print that it's not a leap year and print the year. Same thing over here. The only other difference is C is automatically going to run your main function, where in JavaScript we have to call the main function. So that's what this is doing at the bottom here. And actually this could have gone at the top because JavaScript doesn't, isn't, uh, doesn't matter the order of things. You can have functions below where you call them uh, or above. Okay, so we have that. Let's go ahead and load up the bash version of it. Okay, we'll go up in our C code here. And again, we don't have to import any libraries for uh, the bash code here. But again, we're creating a function called year check, same as over here. We don't put the variable of the year in here. We're going to pass it, and the first variable is going to be dollar sign one, and we're sending that equal to year, and saying let means that it's an integer, okay? So, so far, a little bit of a difference there, but again, if you if you see here, you're like, oh, year equals what I'm passing it. If you know that, you come over here and you go, okay, it's we're looking for a variable year that's being passed. Next, now, there's a lot of different ways you can write out math problems in Bash, and I chose this example here, uh, but there actually are ways to, that I could have made it look more like this one over here, but we're doing the same thing. We're taking the year that's passed, we're dividing it by 400 and getting the remainder. That's what the percent does, It's and it's kind of universal. You can see in JavaScript we did it, in C we did it, in Bash we did it. We're saying percent. 400, that's not getting the percent of something, that's dividing the year by 400 and getting the remainder. If the remainder is zero, we mean it's evenly divisible by 400, we're returning true. Uh, and in C, I think I could put zero here. Uh, bash, you, I'm pretty sure you want it to be zero. You can't put true here, I think. Anyway, uh, but when you're in programming, you know that zero equals true and one equals false. That's kind of universal. So again, I return true here, but I'm pretty sure I could have gone in here and put zero. So again, it's written kind of different. And I could have written this with an if statement here. I could have done if, then return, but I was trying to do it in the same number of lines. So I shorthanded it a little bit. And again, uh, with Bash, I'm more familiar with it. I could have written this whole function in probably one line. Uh, it might have been a little bit long of a line, but I could have shorthanded it to one, a one-liner. But I was trying to line it up so they look similar. Uh, so we're gonna say, if it's divisible by 100 and you get zero remainders, well then it's not a leap, you're returning false. Same thing over here, we're doing the math, we're returning one, which is false. Here, we're checking, okay, is it divisible by four, evenly divisible by four, returning zero? Well then, if that's true, then we're going to return zero, which means true. And then if we get past all of those, my indentation's messed up a little bit here, uh, but that's more of just how <laughs> it ended up getting indentated when I wrote it. We're gonna return one, okay? Uh, now let's look at our main function. So we'll come over here and again, it's going to be very similar. We have our function called main, which here we do have to call because it's not gonna call that by default. And bash is, uh, you know, the order is important. So we had to call main after we declared it. Again, with JavaScript, we could have put this at the top, even though the function was down here. Um, anyway, here we're declaring a year. So you know, looking at this, that this is going to be an array. If you're, if you do any programming in any language, you're going to say, okay, this is an array. So you're like, okay, we're this is how you declare an array. Even if you didn't know that, even if you're looking at most languages where you do something more like this, it's clear that this is an array once you get used to programming. 
Again, we're going to start a for loop here in Bash. This is how you get the length of an array. And there's actually a way where we could just loop through the array without getting the number. But again, I'm just trying to do it similarly. But uh, we got the, the uh, length here. And then we're going to loop through it. We're going to run that function and pass it the year. Here we're going to run this function and pass it the year. And again, instead of printf, I'm doing echo. Although in Bash, you can do a printf, which is very similar to this. Uh, I probably should have wrote that over here. It might be, I, I might be able to copy and paste this code over here. I'm not sure why I changed that. Uh, but again, in most languages, you're going to have print or echo are going to be for, or printf to print to a screen. JavaScript, it's uh, console log. Uh, but yeah, again, very, very similar. And then at the end, we're going to return zero, which isn't even really necessary here with C if you didn't do that, especially if you don't put void there, it might throw an error, but would still work. So I hope you can see those are three very common languages, but very different languages. But the code was very, very similar. So again, if you learn one programming language and you get efficient at it, you're going to be able to understand many other languages. Again, if you get really, really low level, like like assembly, it's, it's going to be very different. And even with C, C, you can write simple stuff like this, but you can also get into uh, memory pointers and having to collect garbage and, and, and free up garbage and stuff like that. You can get real complex with C where the higher level languages uh, take care of that for you. But yeah, it doesn't really matter. You know, look at what you're trying to do. JavaScript, you know, if, if I was to pick a language, I'd probably recommend most people learn JavaScript, even though there's a lot of people out there who hate it. And again, people will argue this language is horrible, that language is horrible. I like JavaScript because every device already supports it because every modern device, whether you're running Linux, Mac OS, uh, Windows, I, iOS, Android, uh, they're all going to have web browsers built in, and if you write something in JavaScript, you can run it in someone's web browser. It's already there. Uh, where if you write something in C, you got to compile it for different operating systems and processor types. Uh, Bash is pretty portable, but most other interpretive languages you have to, like Bash or Python, those run natively on most devices, but you have to install the interpreters. Uh, JavaScript is just real easy to get your feet wet and get it out there. And as I showed you, it's very, very similar to see the way it's written. Uh, at least for, you know, the basic structure of things. Uh, but don't let anybody tell you, don't learn this language. And now I'm going to tell you, don't learn this language. Um, my only suggestion is with most things, avoid proprietary stuff. Most programming languages, you're not going to have an issue. But I would say avoid things like um, Visual Basic, you know, through Windows or anything that, that contains proprietary uh, libraries and interpreters or compilers. <clears throat> You write a program, you want it to be your program. You don't want a couple of years from now for them to lose support and then all of a sudden the code you wrote isn't, isn't supported anymore and, they, and you're just thrown aside. You want control over your own code. So to avoid things like that, basically anything made by Microsoft. Um, I'm sure Apple, I think they have some sort of scripting language for their, their um, desktop machines, laptop machines. Um, but again, you learn Bash, you learn basic shell scripting, uh, that's especially with Windows now has uh, Windows sub system or Linux subsystem for Windows. But even if you go back to Windows XP, you can install Bash as a single binary or even BusyBox, uh, which is going to be similar enough that has all your tools there. Uh, so, yeah, that's my only suggestion when it comes to programming languages is make sure you don't pick one that is based on proprietary software. Just like anything else you do computer wise, avoid the proprietary stuff, right? So, yeah, other than that, look at what you're going to do for it on your, you know, on a computer. If you're writing code uh, for doing daily tasks on your system or server, it's fairly common to do that with something with some sort of shell script like Bash. But you could write it in C, right? There's no reason you could write it in JavaScript or Python. Uh, there's nothing against that. It's just usually system stuff is done with a shell script. Um, but there's nothing to prevent you from using other languages. So. I hope that is uh, confusing enough that you have no clue what I'm talking about, but just don't worry too much about what language, just pick up a language and start learning and practice every day until you understand the concepts. Once you understand the concepts and basic structures, you can then move to another language and it doesn't hurt to learn multiple languages for different things. Uh, I use very little PHP, but on servers, I use PHP to interact with databases because that's the one of the easiest ways to do it. But other than that, I don't really use PHP. So, uh, 
Learn programming because you don't control your machine unless you control the code. Thanks for watching. Films by Chris.com. That's Chris with, a K, Chris with a K. And I hope that you have a great day. I don't think I said it in the video, but as always in the description of this video, there'll be a link to all the example code from the video so you can try them yourselves. Have a great day.